Hi everyone, Dustin from Meridian here, and today we're diving into the 10 most common questions on the FAA Part 107 exam. While we can't guarantee the specific questions you'll face on the FAA Part 107 exam, we've done a lot of research into what some of the most commonly asked questions are just by digging through a variety of sources such as uh, drone law websites, test preparation materials, and even forums where certified pilots share their exam experiences. And so this research just really allowed us to identify what the recurring themes are and some of the specific questions that frequently come up. Question number one has to do with airspace classification. So you might see a question that looks something like this. According to 14 CFR part 107, the remote pilot in command of a small unmanned aircraft planning to operate within class C airspace must, A, must use a visual observer, B, is required to file a flight plan, C, is required to receive ATZ authorization. Right, and so the correct answer for this one is receive ATC authorization. And usually when receive ATC authorization is one of the options for the answers, it's usually the right answer. So Class C airspace is controlled airspace around airports and it has um, a certain level of air traffic. And so the requirement for ATC authorization ensures that all aircraft, including drones, coordinate their movements to maintain safety. All right, weather effects on drones. Question, which report provides current weather observations at airports? Is it NOTAM, METAR, or PIREP? The correct answer is METAR. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. It's weird to say these acronyms aloud like this, but why METAR? METARs provide real-time weather conditions at airports, and they're just really important for drone operators to evaluate different factors like wind, visibility, and precipitation. All of these things can directly impact drone performance and safety. All right, moving on here. Um, this question has to do with UAS operational rules. So what is the maximum allowed altitude for a drone operation under Part 107? Is it A, 500 feet above ground level, B, 400 feet above ground level, C, 300 feet above ground level? The correct answer is B, 400 feet above ground level. And so yeah, the FAA restricts drones to a maximum altitude of 400 feet above ground level under Part 107. Question four that comes up quite frequently has to do with visibility requirements. So by definition, evening civil twilight ends A, 15 minutes after official sunset, B, 30 minutes after official sunset, C, one hour after official sunset. The correct answer is B, 30 minutes after official sunset. So it's just important to know this. They might give you a question like, well, if sunset is at nine o'clock PM, when does evening civil twilight end, right? So that's gonna be 9.30 PM. All right, so moving along here. So what are the minimum visibility requirements for drone operation under part 107 during daylight? Is it A, one mile visibility, B, three miles visibility, or C, five miles of visibility? So the correct answer here is B, three miles of visibility. And that's just what the FAA happens to mandate as the minimum visibility. Um, so yeah, three miles from the control station during daylight operations to ensure that pilots have adequate visual reference to navigate safely. Question number six has to do with aeronautical decision making. So what tool can help drone pilots assess risks before flight? Is it A, a PAVE checklist, B, METAR reports, C, GPS analysis? The correct answer is A, PAVE checklist. So a PAVE checklist stands for Pilot, Aircraft, Environment, and External Pressures. And it's basically just like a risk assessment checklist that helps pilots identify and manage risks before flights. All right, so question number seven has to do with airport operations. So how can drones safely operate near airports? 
I know, you're never going to actually fly your drone near an airport because why would you? Um, but yeah, the FAA seems to be super concerned about knowing what to do if for some reason you happen to be contracted to fly your drone near an airport. So are you going to use transponders? Are you going to follow specific air traffic control guidelines? Or are you just going to fly above airport traffic? All right, so this one is obvious, right? The correct answer is B, following specific ATC guidelines. All right, so how about alcohol and drug influence? So under part 107, how long must a pilot wait after consuming alcohol before operating a drone? Is it A, eight hours, B, 12 hours, or C, 24 hours? All right, the correct answer is eight hours. So if you have a beer at 2 p.m., right, you're not gonna be flying your drone until 10 p.m. that night. Drone loading and performance. All right, so if your manned aircraft weighs 45 pounds just prior to takeoff, and this includes any fuel and added equipment, what would the weight or G-force on the aircraft in a 45 degree bank turn be? A, more than 63.5 pounds, B, approximately 90 pounds, or C, almost 52 pounds. So if you get a question that has to do with load, um, they're usually gonna provide a chart. And in that chart, it's gonna have uh, a couple columns. One column will, will say what the degree is and the corresponding factor that you're gonna to have to multiply the weight of the drone by. So in this case, we just need to identify what the important information is in this question. The aircraft is 45 pounds, that's important and the aircraft is going to be making a 45 degree bank turn. That's also important. So we'll look at this column here and look, it says 45 degrees. And then there's this number next to it. That's what we have to multiply 45 pounds by. And that'll give us our answer here, which is a more than 63 and a half pounds. All right, 10 pre-flight safety checks. So what is essential to check during the pre-flight inspection of a drone according to the FAA? Again, this is just the FAA is hyper-focused on safety. So I do think, um, you know, as you're studying through your, your test materials and stuff, make sure you're focusing on safety-oriented questions because I guarantee it you're going to get quite a few of those when you take the test. So anyway, yeah, going back to this. What is essential to check during the pre-flight inspection of a drone according to the FAA? A, camera settings. Well, I think that's really important to check, but I don't think the FAA cares what your footage looks like. B, battery levels and propeller integrity. C, flight path for scenic views. All right, and the correct answer is B, battery levels and propeller integrity. So, you know, just making sure that the battery levels are sufficient and that the propellers are in good condition. That's really important for safe operation of your drone. And just doing these checks can really help prevent any sort of mid-flight failures and accidents. And again, that's just critical for maintaining safety and reliability during drone operation. Okay, so there you have it. Those were some of the 10 most common drone questions that appear on the FAA Part 107 exam. So we hope you found that these insights were helpful. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Best of luck in your studying and we'll see you next time.